Welcome everyone to another weekly edition of our Stay Smart newsletter and podcast brought to you by Vicinity Corporate Housing, where we try to keep you updated on what we see happening in the relocation, corporate housing, hospitality, any industry that we think might be relevant to you and to your company. I'm coming to you from a beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota today. I was here for the annual Merck conference, uh, the Minnesota Employee Relocation Council's annual conference. It's a great day of education, uh, training. It's always a great networking opportunity. I was able to see some some friends and some colleagues. Um, it's a little warmer than I was anticipating. Um, I'm glad I missed out on the on the golf outing on Wednesday. Um, but I had a great event yesterday. Some great a great uh, time to see friends and colleagues I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, I always enjoy my time in Minnesota. Um, so we have some great articles this week that I want to talk to you about. Um, the first one is kind of a concept article about uh, the U.S. short-term rental space um, and what it would look like if there was some consolidation. It's currently a $53.5 billion industry. Um, there's, not one, there's not any big recognizable brand like a Marriott or a Hilton right now, um, you know, other than Sonder or Vacasa. You know, there's not any really big, in comparison to hotels, there's not a huge brand. Um, and what would like consolidation look like in that space? Um, right now, 72% of hotels are in some sort of brand agreement. Um, and then, you know, in the short-term rental space, professional hosts only represent 1% of all the hosts on Airbnb's platform. Um, they do represent, you know, almost 28% of the revenue. Um, so you can see the potential of consolidation. And, and I do think we will see consolidation. I don't know if we'll see it at the scale that this article talks about. Um, but it is an interesting concept of, you know, what that would look like if you consolidated into a, a large player, like, a, you know, Marriott or a Hilton. Uh, the next article is, uh, about Airbnb's mixed message in regards to the Maui fires and the, uh, the refund policy or the cancellation policy. Uh, and it kind of compares it Airbnb's message versus uh, v -B VRBO and, and some hotel responses. Um, and it's really just the dissatisfaction of both guest and host of their response and kind of their muddled message um, where, you know, Airbnb is saying right now to guests, they're saying, check with your host about refunds or cancellations where VRBO is saying, we'll work with you. We'll work with your host. You're going to get refunded. It's just a more clear message. So it's a little disappointing from Airbnb. This kind of mixed message um, because they've done some good things. They're offering housing to people that are displaced due to the fire. So they're really doing some, some, some great things. And it's just disappointing to have this kind of muddled message um, out there. The next article is about first time home buyers. Uh, so the median age of first-time home buyers is up to 36 years old uh, versus 40 years ago when they started reporting this, uh, it was 29 years old. So it's gone from 29 years old to 36. Um, and and you know, a lot of that has to do with affordability. Homes are expensive. and um, But it also talks about the older generation, the baby boomer population, um, utilizing equity they have, currently have in homes to make purchases now versus millennials having to wait a little bit longer to make that first home purchase. Um, so probably going to see this continue to go up a little bit. I don't see this changing a lot, um, but that'll be interesting to watch. And then the next article is from the points guy. If you're not following the points guy, uh, if you have to use it. If you're traveling at all, if you are any points program or rewards program or you travel a lot, definitely you should be checking him out. The points great points guy is a great follow. So this article, it's about bed bugs. Um, you know, kind of a, not a fun topic to talk about, but it's something that if you travel at all, if you stay in a hotel at all, you have to talk about it's something you need to read up on. Uh, this article talks about the, um, his experience of, of getting bed bugs and, you know, the tips and tricks of not getting them and talks about um, six prominent hotels on the Las Vegas Strip in the last year or so that have reported to have had bed bugs. Um, obviously very recognizable names, um, but it happens, bed bugs happen. So you need to be aware of that. Um, and what I like about this is it gives you tips and tricks on not getting bed bugs or what you need to be doing, whether the obvious ones like don't leave your clothes on the floor in a hotel uh, to when you get home, you're leaving your luggage outside in the garage. Um, some good tips and tricks on not getting bed bugs. So definitely check that out. Uh, the last article is again from Bloomberg um, the, about the crisis of the U.S. 
affordability, the housing affordability. Um, it's at a 40 year low, affordability is at a 40 year low. A lot of that having to do with availability, the high interest rates. We saw 30 year mortgages uh, hit almost seven and a quarter percent this year. Uh, this article talks about they could get close to 8% if the Fed raises rates again. Um, and that just makes affordability really hard. Um, you know, like we talked about in the previous article, first time home buyers not being able to buy a first time home until later and having to wait. And it's definitely something that I think we need to continue to look at and you know, policies that need to be made around this and you know what we need to be doing. We need to have that conversation. Uh, it's a really good article to read. And finally, there's an article that I don't have listed on in this, but I'll, I'll put it in the comments. Um, I'm here, in, like I said, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. There was an article earlier this this month um, from Bloomberg about Minneapolis curbing inflation better than really most markets in the U.S. Um, and a lot of that having to do with what the initiatives that they put in place around affordable housing, you know, really in the apartments. And... Um, the CPI, a lot of what goes into that report has to do with shelter, um, which is, you know, housing apartment rents. And Minneapolis kind of on the forefront a little bit of investing in and putting money into affordable housing apartments and that having such a big impact on inflation in that market. Um, there's, I get it. The inflation, it's definitely, there's lots of different factors. The groceries are higher, things are higher. But this article does point out that you invest in affordable housing, this is the way you should do it. If you want to curb inflation, Jay Parsons actually had, a, he mentioned this article earlier this week, and I think it's a great point of like, you need to come up with strategies and ideas about affordable housing and, and how do you do it at the local level or the state level. And I think this is an interesting article. I'll put it in the comments. So check that out. Um, if you have any other comments about that article or any of the articles that we talked about, Please leave an article, you know, please leave a comment. Um, anything else that you'd like to talk about, any questions you'd like to see us answer, please put those in the comments. Um, you can message me also, or you can, you can just leave a comment. We'd love to hear back from you. We'd love to hear ideas, uh, anywhere you would like to see us reporting from, uh, anything that you would like to include. If you would like to be on this podcast with me, um, kind of get lonely here sometimes. I'd love to have somebody else on the, on the stage with me. Uh, so please let me know. I'd love to get your feedback. That's what I see transitioning this week. Take care, everyone.